All right, what's going on, Giants fans? Kind of have to make this video at this point. It's a, it's a, it's a Corona video. Jason Garrett, James Bradbury. I actually wasn't gonna make a one just for Jason Garrett, just because I, you know it's gonna be. I, I know people know that I'm not a big fan of Jason Garrett, and I didn't, you know, I had people tweeting at me like, "You happy?" And it's like, "No, I'm not happy. You got Corona." So we'll start, we'll start with Garrett, and then we'll move to Bradbury. Jason Garrett gets Corona. Now the difference between Jason Garrett and a player. And this is what we'll talk about. Jason Garrett is actually still involved. There, I mean, today, like they're today, they're doing their entire meetings and practices remotely because, um, because of the Jason Garrett situation. Um, even though there's no one that's been deemed a close contact, like they take the day off from practice, they do it all virtually. So Jason Garrett is still involved in it. Um, he's still, you know, doing the meetings. He just can't call the plays on Sunday night. Uh, so I know some people are like, oh, this is, we get to finally see what this offense can do with Freddie Kitchens who attacks downfield. Now I do think Freddie will be a little more aggressive than Jason Garrett with the play calls, but don't expect it to be anything like wildly different for a few reasons. First of all, Jason Garrett's not fired. He's got coronavirus. He, he, he's not fired. So he's still the offensive coordinator this week. Just J Freddie Kitchens is the interim play caller. He's not even the interim offensive coordinator, just the interim play caller, Jason Garrett. And it's it's Thursday. The game plan for the offense has to, has already been installed. Like I said, this isn't like they fired Jason Garrett and they're revamping and, and trying something new. Jason Garrett and the Giants have already installed the game plan for the Cleveland Browns. Um, it's Thursday. You're not you're not revamping this because you have a new play call. Like I said, I can expect to see some more aggression with the play calls, but uh, don't don't expect to see anything nuts. Um, and Cole McCoy is probably going to play a quarterback. Can here's something I know people like they they've been you know practicing Jones and seeing what he can do. Listen, I was fine with him playing this past game, but if they send him out there with a sprained ankle and a pulled hamstring, to me that's that's nuts. You can't do that. You can't do that to me. That that is nuts to put him out there with two gimp legs. I mean. It was already nuts. They sent him out there in the second half with that. It happened in the second quarter. They sent him out in the second half. And especially that fourth quarter, if you go back and look at some plays, the dude could barely walk. And I was, I got mad at, I didn't get mad at him, but I, I was critical of his second to last play where I'm like, dude, he sh there was a shot there to be taken. He should have taken it. Like, yeah, he would have to rip it a little bit. It's like, oh, well, the guy had no good legs. Literally no good legs. They can't send him back out there. They just can't. Not to say that he won't be helped. I'm not saying you just shut him down for the season, but you can't shut him out. You can't send him out there Sunday with two bad legs, even if the hamstring's a little better. But if you got, he probably hurt it because he was favoring it. I mean, that kind of explains like the guy, the fumbles. You know, he only had seven fumbles through 11 games. He had literally cut it his rate like over in half. And then, well, what happens? <laughs> what happens when you're you and you're trying to hold your other leg? Guess what? You're gonna let go of the ball. Just think, think about it anytime somebody smacked you in the back of the leg or something. Um, and the the one where he wasn't after the ankle injury was the first quarter when he was lit up by Marcus Golden. I did a I did a rant on that play, so we're not gonna revisit that. So, like I said, I don't I don't expect anything crazy. Now, it is the Freddie Kitchens Colt McCoy revenge game. So if we can pull something out here, it would be nuts. You know that angle out there, Freddie Kitchens. Um, hey, Freddie Kitchens knows this uh this team better than anybody. Better than anybody. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to buy into some types of storyline. Um, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Uh, so I think I have everything on Garrett. Do I have everything on Garrett? I do. Hope he gets better. You have to say that. Um, and it's true. I, I do hope he gets better. Um, in fact, I actually was feeling bad. That is like, I was talking to somebody. It's like, I kind of feel bad how much I'm anti-Garrett. Because like, he's probably a nice guy. You know? And I'm just trashing him because I don't like the way he calls a football game. Regardless. Um, now let's talk about James Bradbury. This this is a big... This this screws the Giants. First of all, well, what happened, I guess I'll tell you. James Bradbury was a close contact. So he, he doesn't even have COVID, but he was a close contact with somebody outside the facility. I would assume that's a family member, but you know you know what they say when you assume. It makes something out of you and me. It makes an ass. Um... I'm feeling goofy right now for some reason. So, I, I would assume it's a family member. He's out. Now, this hurts regardless because James Bradbury's been playing like an all-pro cornerback. Um, 
He's been shutting down number one wide receivers. Hopkins had a good game, but it was really Arizona had a good game plan where they forced Bradbury to to pick between covering deep or covering Hopkins under short underneath, and and Bradbury had to cover deep or were, they would have given up big plays. Um, and it hurts because not just because he's the best player. Darnay Holmes did not practice. He's I'm I don't think he's gonna play. I don't think he's gonna play. So that means you have one healthy corner on the fifty three man roster. Isaac Adam. Isaac Yadam right now is the only healthy corner on the 53-man roster. So what will the Giants do? Well, you assume Xavier McKinney will play in the nickel corner again, like he did versus Arizona in, 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 in relief of Darnay Holmes. So you'd assume Xavier McKinney's there. Isaac Yadam um, will will move to that cornerback one. Who plays cornerback two, though? I would think, now this is me, I would say you put Logan Ryan there. Logan Ryan has real... NFL cornerback experience and being good at it. Not just playing, you know, not like Jabril Peppers, like, oh, he played cornerback at Michigan. No, like, Logan Ryan was an NFL cornerback, a really good one. So I would put Logan Ryan down there. And then you keep Love at free safety, put, you know, keep Pep at strong. And then Adrian Colbert may be back this week. I don't know if he's going to be back, but he was activated. He was designated to return from the IR. So. You use Adrian Colbert in those three safety looks. And you remember, they were playing Colbert over Love. You know, And if you watch any of the All-22 streams, Love hasn't been doing anything special. So um, you could do that. Now, I've, I've, they'll probably call up Jaron Williams from the practice squad again. Um, it would just make sense. But I don't, I don't, I don't think they should expect Jaron Williams to come up from the practice squad and then start. Use him as depth. Use him so you plan, plan to have Logan Ryan, and then you have an actual cornerback as depth. Not you start Jaron Williams... And then somebody gets hurt or whatever happens. And now you have like someone who hasn't practiced that corner at all playing corner. So I, I would start Logan Ryan there. Some people have said Julian Love. Listen, I was on the big Julian Love should play cornerback train going into the season. They just don't view him as a corner. I you know I thought he could play there. You know He was second in the Jim Thorpe uh, awards. Uh, only Second to DeAndre Baker. I think he could play corner, but if they only view him as a safety, he's only been practicing at safety for over a year now. I just don't see them moving him down the corner. I, I, I think it'd be more realistic to see Logan Ryan back there. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know what they do. The Giants, this is this is not good, though. This is not good. However however they try and do this, it doesn't work. If, if Patrick Graham is able to slow down this Browns offense, then he should get like he should get a head coaching job. Like he already probably should, but if he can if he can slow down this Browns uh, offense or hell if, if we even pull out a win and hold them to less than twenty points, then Patrick Graham deserves all the praise in the world. He already does, but man, this is this is a brutal situation for the New York Giants. I don't want I don't know what's this is going to look ugly. This is on Sunday Night Football, man. This is this is going to be ugly. Now we're gonna win. We're gonna win. You gotta have the confidence. I'm a confident. I try to be a confident person. We're gonna win. Winners win. But this is gonna be ugly. <laughs> oh man, this is brutal. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all that bull crap. Let's I don't know what we're gonna do, but let's let's try and win.